Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Patrick Duffy, and I'm very excited to be here in the beautiful NASDAQ studios overlooking Times Square in New York City. Our week-long series, Future Thinker, runs in tandem with Design Pavilion, an annual event that celebrates design and architecture in the heart of New York City's Times Square during the New York City NYC by Design Festival. For the next week, our series explores how agents of change, disruptors, and leaders in the design industry will shape the future. Today, we'll be looking at how the combination of material science and technology are changing the future of consumer experience. My guests today are from Avery Dennison, worldwide leader in adhesive technologies, display graphics, and packaging materials used to engage consumers and manage inventories uh, and supply chains worldwide. I'd like to welcome, welcome Francesco Mello, Vice President and General Manager of Global RFID, and Max Winograd, Director of Open Innovation and Venture Investments. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to Times Square. NASDAQ, we're so excited to have you. Um, so, first question, Francesco. Um, our viewers might not know what RFID is. Can you just give us a little top line on what that is? Sure, Patrick, happy to. So RFID is a technology, it's a passive technology that uses radio frequency waves to communicate a unique digital identity in an extremely efficient manner. So unlike barcodes, if you have a box with say 200 items, you can read everything that's inside the box without having to open the box. And that's extremely, extremely efficient from a supply chain management perspective. And how does that affect the consumer? What, 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 why is that good for a consumer? Well, so uh, let me give you an example of uh, what we're seeing in, um, in supply chains for apparel and footwear. Mm -hmm. So we're actually using this technology to uh, have garments be born digital, as we call them. So we assign this unique digital identity at source, and then we allow retailers and brands to monitor every single step of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to not only know what, what they are having, but also uh, also have a, a much much better accuracy from that perspective. So when you get to the store, uh, the retailers actually know everything they have and where they have it. And from a consumer standpoint, yeah. what does that allows them is to find what they want when they want it. That's the fundamental element of, um, and interestingly enough, is also one of the key uh, promoters of a net promoter score, which is how likely is a consumer to promote a, a ah, okay. retail environment. So that's something that we've seen uh, uh, time and time again for people that adopt RFID. So how are consumers then responding to that? That's an interesting question. Like, are, are they uptaking to this? Do they know about it when they come into a store or? No, absolutely. So uh, uh, I think what we've seen is this whole uh, event of omni-channel. Mm. So uh, people don't just buy online. They just don't, don't buy, you know, in the bricks and mortar store. They want to have, as I said, everything, they, what they want, where they want it. Mm. So consumers are somewhat, I would call, uh, uh, you know, wanting that immediacy, they want things at that moment they feel like it. So those consumers that value that, that they go to their mobile phone and they want to know where can I find that, those are the ones that are, you know, allowing uh, uh, brands that have that level of visibility and accuracy to differentiate themselves from the every other brand. So absolutely we see that. Okay, so interesting, well, switching to you, when we're talking about sustainability, how does this affect a sustainability in a supply chain, for instance? Well, I think when you think about apparel and fashion, RFID together, it actually creates an opportunity for the true cradle-to-gradle -cradle vision mm. that I think we all have as people that are real believers in sustainability to be able to create that circular economy. And if you think about some of the work that you were doing in Copenhagen and helping to drive some of these swaps of clothing, we could actually use RFID technology and our Janela platform to actually create that connected wardrobe mm. and ultimately drive a life for that product after I'm finished wearing it or after you're finished wearing it to okay. find its new home. So it's cradle to cradle as opposed to cradle to grave. So specifically then, like what segments could RFID and your technology make more sustainable? Like what are those specific? Sure, so, so just building on what Max said, so yeah. I, think, I think it is important to understand that one of the biggest challenges supply chains have today is how do I manage my supply chain efficiently? So what people do is they build buffers uh, at, across the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to have better visibility and accuracy, you actually reduce your stock on hand by about 10%. So that means you don't have to overproduce, which leads to markdowns and waste. So that's a big point, you know, sort of on the apparel and footwear space. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing increasingly now in the food space as well, which has been one of the growing areas that, uh, that we have, is the, the whole uh, element about uh, shelf life. How do you manage yeah. when you have a perishable item? How can you optimize shelf life? Mm. And as a consequence of that, reduce waste. And uh, you know, first numbers indicate that you could in theory reduce up to 20% of the whole food waste at the grocery level. Yeah. You can now think about, okay, what's that gonna take us next? You can mm -hmm. think about, could I have a fridge that reads everything that's inside? 
and would do for myself as a consumer the same that the technology could do for a grocer mm. in terms of minimizing the shelf life piece and making sure that I know what I have and making sure that I can right. you know, use it by the appropriate time. So not to put you on the spot, but do you have any me interesting metrics that you might be able to throw out to us about what, what, you guys, what your technology has done and maybe what we can see, take a look at? Any interesting metrics oh. of waste savings maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, waste savings is, uh, from as I said, so on the food space, uh, uh, the, our first findings uh, uh, sort of indicate around 20% reduction in, in food waste for perishable items mm -hmm. from a, basically an improved shelf life management perspective. Okay. On the apparel side, we've seen, at, 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 as I believe I mentioned, we've seen a, as up to 10% decrease in overall inventory on hand, which actually means you actually could, could you know, you don't have all that additional buffer that potentially ends up as waste. Mm -hmm. So those would be two of the key metrics I would call out. Okay, okay. And so can you give us a little bit of an inside look at what you're doing with Design Pavilion today in Times Square? Would you like to take that one? Sure thing. Yeah, what we're doing here in Times Square yeah. is absolutely phenomenal, which is we're taking a combination of partnership with ArtsThread, which is a digital uh, platform to connect with artists and designers around the world mm -hmm. and give them a global mouthpiece to help showcase what they're doing with everyday items but our unique materials. Mm -hmm. And that's showcasing what we're doing in the design pavilion right now. Mm -hmm. And we're combining that with some of our newest innovations and investments that we've been making, including the Vela film from Gauzy, which is a start that we made an investment in last year mm. that is really disrupting the retail environment. Ah, okay. and, and Francisco was talking about this whole concept of, of, of omni-channel. Mm -hmm. And what, what Vela is enabling for brands and for consumers like us mm -hmm. is that we can now have a much more personalized brick and mortar retail experience not just an experience that's personalized online, but also offline. Mm, interesting. So, what? So, how did you work with the artist for Arts Thread, and, and how did that process? What did that look like? How what we had was we had this very competitive competition. Okay. It was hard to pick a winner. <laughs> we had about four amazing up-and-coming designers okay. and artists that we ultimately partnered with out of over 200. Okay. That created and took our f unique films and adapted them to ordinary objects and really bring them to life. We're then surrounding that with a nine-foot cube mm. that's showcasing this amazing Vela film. It's switchable. So it's a window that'll actually go from transparent, like a window, to opaque. Okay. It is ultimately a medium for a digital display. So imagine your ordinary storefront going from being just a see-through window to then having that really on-demand engagement and that dynamic content with the end user. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So when with the process of the with the process of the of the application, what are the are there strict requirements for that, or what does that look like, or how how did that process work? Sure, with the, with the Vela film, we certainly want to make sure that we're ultimately digitizing glass in a way that's attractive mm -hmm. and engaging with consumers. Okay. And so we look at certain things like the size and the framework and where it's located, because ultimately what Vela can offer is one click to privacy, so it's great for office environments. Mm -hmm. So imagine in a place like a WeWork so or shared environment, so it's multi-use, yeah. but also eventually in a home type environment like that as well. And then in retail, that idea that it becomes the medium for dynamic personalized content mm -hmm. to be displayed is really interesting. So another question, how can you use the Internet of Things to make fashion more sustainable with RFID? Let me give you a couple of examples, Patrick. Uh, uh, so imagine you have this, every garment of your wardrobe with a unique digital identity. And you actually know what you have there. You know when you've used it, you know how often you've used it. Similarly, you know what you've not used for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you have a community of people, of friends, of people you would like to share that with, and they would in turn share it with you as well. Not only you could increase the sharing economy of items that, you know what, I'd only need it a couple of times a year, why do I need to own it? Mm. Could I share it with someone? But also you could encourage reuse and even items that approach end of life. You could actually use that to you know, be able to uh, make sure you give it the proper, you know, the proper end, so to speak, or to support communities as needed. So I think that, that, that's one lens uh, mm. from, from, from that perspective. I and think that would be extremely, extremely valuable. And what kind of metrics then would you look at with that? And then how could, that, how could you apply that to a retail relationship later on? So if we're talking about, for instance, using this in a sharing economy or um, the metrics that you garner from that, how does that get applied to the future retail, for instance? Yeah, so, so let, me, let, me, let me give you a perspective there. So when you have this unique digital identity in each item, what you do is you create a digital life of a product, right? So, that digital life allows you to have a number of benefits. The, the digital wardrobes, if you'd like, or the connected wardrobe, it's one of that. But you could actually look at the whole thread of what has that item been? Uh, you know, how was it manufactured? Mm. Was it done respecting the communities? Has it, what's, the, what's its carbon footprint? Right. And so on. So you actually have the full end-to-end -end perspective. And then you could actually take, I mean, we've actually done a very interesting project with Rochambeau here in New York where we created this smart jacket. They're great. Yeah. That jacket would actually unlock specific Mm. Uh, 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 you know things and entries to venues and whatnot, creating a unique link between 
the consumer and the brand that was never possible before. Mm. So the, the ultimate goal is, can, can the technology provide value add to the consumer and to the brand while being doing the right thing for the planet. I think that's really where we're trying to, you know, where we're navigating. And it's still early days, yep. but we're seeing very promising results. Well, we're going to have to have you back to talk about that one next time because that's something I'm personally interested. But thank you so much for coming to join us, Avery Dennison. We're so excited to have you, and we can't wait to go and see your installation in Design Pavilion in Times Square here in New York City. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you for having us. Thanks.